Hello feeders and new viewers, welcome to another Magic Chess video. Today I'll be explaining basic and advanced positioning techniques and formations in Magic Chess Season 10. If you enjoyed and or learned something new, make sure to like the video. If you have any additions, subtractions, multiplications or divisions, make sure to write them down in the comments. Be sure to check out the other videos on the channel, I do mostly tutorials about commander skills and synergy combos. The links to the latest tutorials will be in the description. You can also find gameplays on the channel for random entertainment. If you like the stuff and want to support the channel, be sure to subscribe. Now, without further ado, let's get started with today's video. Positioning, one of the most important but unspoken aspects of magic chess. The importance of positioning and counter positioning cannot be stressed enough as it could be the difference between boycotting the enemy, hyper carry, or getting completely wrecked. Let's start with the basics. Number 1. Place melee heroes on the front row and ranged heroes on the back row. This is the most basic rule that every player should know. Heroes with heavy crowd control abilities like Tigreal, Gatotkacha and Bellary should be placed at the extreme front of the formation, that is on the squares C4, D4 and E4. I will use chess notation a lot in this video, so here is the board with every square marked. Horizontal squares are alphabetical and vertical squares are numerical. Long range DPS heroes should be placed at the extreme edge of the formation, that is on the squares A6 and G6. These five squares are the most important in a formation and I will explain why soon. Just remember, melee heroes in front and ranged heroes at the back and the reason for this is very simple really. Apart from it being the normal convention, attribute wise, melee heroes have a physical defense of 36. Melee heroes have 36 physical defense which is why they belong on the front row. This applies to fighters, assassins and tanks. Heroes with a two square range, that is some mages and some marksmen have 30 physical defense while those with a 3 plus square range have 24 physical defense there are special situations that might defy this normal convention but that will also be explained later on number two melee heroes are divided into tanks and damage dealers while melee heroes are recommended for the front row not all of them can survive in the front row and or have higher efficiency when they are not under enemy fire Good examples of these are Argus and Freya. Basic attack type melee heroes whose damage output can significantly drop if they get hit by enemy crowd control. Heroes like this are better put in the middle of the formation, like on square D5 for example. So these are the two basic rules of arranging your team. Just by following these rules you can get a few default formations. For example, number 1, the box by Rudy Rich. Obtained by placing all 9 heroes in a box in either corner of the board. Number 2, the pyramid, obtained by placing all 9 heroes in a pyramid emerging from D6. Number 3, the expanded pyramid, obtained by placing all 9 heroes in a pyramid, except that the heroes do not touch each other. And finally, the tray, obtained by placing 7 heroes on the 6th row and 2 heroes on A5 and G5, among other formations. I can make dedicated videos on each formation explaining their individual strengths and weaknesses. If you want to see that because I know I definitely want to make that, let me know in the comments. But those are end game formations, how do you build formations right from the start of the game? Next up let's take a look at a step by step guide for building teams or at least how I arrange my team. I follow two principles. For melee, for melee heroes, place the first at d4. If there are two, place them on c4 and e4. Place the third at d4. If there is a fourth, place on b4, c4, e4 and f4. Place the fifth at d4. If there is a sixth, place on a4, b4, c4, e4, f4, g4. If there are seven, fill up the fourth row. For ranged heroes, place the first at d6. If there are two, place at a6 and g6. Place the third at d6. If there are four, place them at a6, b6, f6 and g6. Place the fifth at d6. 
If there are six, place them at a6, b6, c6, e6, f6, and g6. If there are seven, fill up the sixth row. For example, if you have four melee heroes and five ranged heroes, the arrangement will be melee heroes on b4, c4, e4, f4. The ranged heroes will be on a6, b6, d6, f6, and g6. And if you have three melee heroes and six ranged heroes, the arrangement would be melee heroes on c4, d4, e4. The ranged heroes on a6, b6, c6, e6, f6, and g6. You would notice a pattern in this. The melee heroes start from the center of the board and gravitate towards the corners as more heroes are added, while the ranged heroes start from the center but do not gravitate towards the corners. Instead, they move from the corners and make their way towards the center. And there's a simple reason for this, and this lies in the target searching AI of the heroes. Heroes search for targets in an anti-clockwise direction starting from behind them. Don't quote me, this conclusion is based on my observation. What this means is that an enemy at G3 will target an enemy at E4 before targeting one at G7, even though both squares are equidistant from G3. This means that in truth, you only need two tanks positioned on C4 and E4, while the other seven heroes can be placed on the sixth row, regardless of if they are melee heroes or ranged heroes. This arrangement is what I like to call the vest and is one of the strongest arrangements in magic chess right now and here is why. As earlier mentioned, enemy heroes will always target the tanks on C4 and E4, which means all backline heroes are 100% safe from damage, except from assassins. Number 2. Melee heroes placed on B6, D6 and F6 will advance forward to do damage, but will not be targeted by any basic attacks until the main tanks die. Perfect for Freya, Zilong and Damage Argus. Now that you know the recommended formation and how it works, let us look at the best heroes for each square. For the tank squares C4 and E4, the best heroes for these two squares are those with massive AoE crowd control abilities. The best tank in the game right now is Gadot Kacha as his alt has a very massive range which always automatically aims for the square with the widest reach. He gets a free flicker basically. Other good heroes here are Belleric, Tigreal or Atlas. Argos is also decent as he becomes immune to death for a few seconds. The corner squares A6 and G6. These two squares belong to the most important hyper carries of the team. They are the farthest from the center and by extension the safest from damage. Unless the enemy decides to focus an attack on a specific corner which can easily be countered by moving the hyper carry to the opposite corner, these two squares will protect your hyper even from assassins to an extent, although at the expense of the heroes in the center. You want to maintain these two squares throughout the battle phase. As such, the best heroes for this square are 3 plus range heroes, for example, Leila, Leslie, Mia and other archers when the archer synergy is triggered, Javier, Vexana, Gord among others. Moskov and Claude are most suited for the squares C6, D6 or E6 as they are going to dash out of the squares leaving them open and vulnerable, leaving the squares open and vulnerable. And as I said earlier, you want to have those squares maintained throughout the battle phase. The other squares, for the other squares, just put all the other heroes, just fill up the other heroes there. Now that is all about conventional arrangements. Now let us look at the factors that can influence the arrangement of your team. Magic Chess is a 1v1 game, which means you are going to face another sentient being who also has a plan in mind. This means you have to outsmart them. A very important action you must take every game is scouting. Know what your enemies are planning, the position of their hyper carries, their commander skills, their items and battle spells, among others. To get a good idea of how a round will go, simulate a round in your mind and try to make adjustments where necessary to protect your hyper carry while making sure his hyper carry gets got as quickly as possible. Watch out for commander skills like Showdown, that is Link's second skill which drags the hero at A6. Know if to tackle it head on or use a hero as bait. Also watch out for synergies like the Northern Veil, vale, that is Franco's hook on A6 or G6 heroes and Aurora's meteor on the area with the most enemies. Battle spells like Purify and Flicker should also be noted. I mentioned earlier the importance of repositioning your hyper carry to keep them safe from enemies. 
However, this cannot 100% protect your hypercarries from assassins. When facing a team with an assassin hypercarry, the best thing to do is to make sure they focus a melee hero, that is a tank first. This brings me to my most extreme formation, the reverse vest. Instead of having the tanks at C4 and E4, place them on C6 and E6, then line up the remaining 7 heroes on the front row. This can easily be reverse countered if the enemy places his assassins on the front row. This can then be reverse reverse countered by moving the most important hypercarry to A6 or G6 because now his assassins will not jump back and instead will have to walk the whole board. This can also be reverse 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 countered by moving the most important assassin backwards so he can jump. It's a mind game. Once again, make sure to scout the enemy so you know the best course of action. And that is all you need to learn about proper positioning and counter positioning in Magic Chess. I hope you enjoyed and learned something new. Be sure to leave a like and a comment. Make sure to check my other videos and subscribe if you like what you see and so you don't miss future uploads. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.